Welcome to Physicists in the Wild. My name is Aggie Branchik. In this series, we chat with physicists who pursued careers outside of academia. In today's episode, we chat with Juan Cachuso, who did his PhD in cosmology and is now working as a data scientist for an e-commerce company. So I'm working in a company named uh, Mercado Libre. It's an e-commerce and fintech platform in Latin America. And I'm working in the data science team as a data scientist. There's a very analytical programming coding heavy part, but there's also a very social collaborative part with people that are not necessarily deep into data as I am. What would you say are your least and most favorite parts of your job? Okay, let's start with the highlights. Uh, as I had suspected before, you know, going into uh, industry, a non-academic job, did involve a big discovery and a big transformation in my skills and my way of thinking. So uh, at least particularly for the kind of work that I've been doing, uh, you find yourself in a little bit more of a more fast-paced scenarios, right? Uh, some, you know, some product has to come out. We need to understand it the better we can as soon as possible. It actually helped me discover new ways of thinking. I also think that I really like how much my ability to communicate with uh, different profiles of people has improved. It's different explaining something to a colleague in academia or a grad student that someone who is far more uh, away from the uh, the subject. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's being a huge opportunity for learning a little bit more about storytelling and how to communicate things in a clear, uh, simple way. I love that. It, it's been conducive to me to have a little bit more of a better balance in life. I know when I start working, I know when it ends. It's undeniable that sometimes I find myself thinking about work afterwards, mm -hmm. as I did during the PhD. But I think that there's a structure that helps me keep that a little bit more at bay. You know, I also like that I feel that I, I was getting paid well, you know, academic jobs are not necessarily the ones that, you know, pay a lot of money. I, I don't think it's necessarily connected to the value that you bring. There's a lot of social reasons why one job pays more than the other, but it felt it, it just felt a little bit better that, you know, I'm working very, very hard into this and trying to make such a, you know, uh, good Good, good work with high standards, being careful, uh, giving a good, you know, d deliver a good product or result. And on top of that, game paid well. So that, that was great. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and, and everything has a flip side. I don't think that nothing is purely good and anything is purely bad. So, so what is the flip side? The flip side is sometimes, uh, you know, I coming from an academic background, sometimes it clashed with me that, you know, people want to get something out as soon as possible. And you're like, wait, 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 you know, we have to do this carefully. And sometimes the weight of the business is larger than, you know, the the need of doing something up to the 100% or 90% or 80%. In some cases, I think it's justified and it was an opportunity for me to learn. And in other occasions, I do think that it would be good to slow down the marketing teams and product teams and say, hey, you need to do this right. Uh, at, at certain points, maybe the, the specific things you have to do are may not be as exciting as thinking about the universe. And sometimes thinking about what people are buying and selling is not the most glamorous thing. Whenever I have those sort of moments in which I'm like, oh, you know, I wish I would be trying to see something more exciting. I try to put it back, uh, challenge myself and say, so do you, th you think that this is simple? Huh? It, it's actually not. The world is a very complicated place and it's very complex. And understanding complexity, I think is a huge thing. I can keep myself humble in that way. Mm -hmm. I can still see a lot of opportunity and a lot of intellectual excitement in what I do. Can you say a little more about your experience as a PhD student? Um, I'm going to start again with like the things I really like. One of the things that 
I really appreciate of the whole experience was how much I could learn from a bunch of very smart people. It is amazing. You're, you're suddenly surrounded with people that really like to do deep thinking and they have very different point of view. You see them arguing with each other. You see them joining forces. Another thing that I felt really good about the PhD is that I was very happy with the work that I was doing, the, the, the topic. Um, I felt that um, I had I had made a, a good choice of, of where I wanted to contribute to physics. I worked on cosmology and very data-oriented stuff. I discovered another sort of passion and love in, oh, thinking about actual data and how to work with it is super exciting. In those terms, I'm very happy about you know what, I, what how I grew and the things that I discovered during the PhD. If I if I start thinking a little bit about more of the challenges, one of the big challenges that I faced was related to how the motivation for doing the work changed from the beginning to the middle and sort of to the end. At, at the beginning, I feel that you know I was getting into the PhD to uh, very excited about the idea of contributing to physics to push it ahead. And that was the main motivation, what I would learn about the universe, what I would soak from this environment. But slowly, it started turning into a little bit more of a fearful motivation related to like, oh, but if I don't do some very remarkable or, or you know amazing job, I, I, I don't think people are going to like listen to me or they're not just going to not like notice me or you know, want to work with me or give opportunities. I, I didn't feel alone in that feeling. I think it's something that I've seen in a lot of other people. Instead of do, you know, doing the work every day because it's a big passion, the motivation starts being some sort of future objective or um, some sort of validation from the academic community, which is good to have, but I didn't like having that as my main motivation. Then you start questioning and you start doubting yourself. And that initial sort of uh, very pure, more childlike motivation that um, started putting itself in a little bit in the background. Um, I think that that was one of the most challenging things. And uh, thinking, you know, a little bit of, about the what's going to come after the PhD. You, you start hearing stories about like, other people who have like had some struggle finding, you know, uh, a permanent position and then you're going from one place to the other. So, yeah, the picture kind of like started changing a lot and uh, processing that. I think that it took a lot of mental energy so it wouldn't, you know, be hurtful. How and when did you decide to leave academia? As I was approaching the writing of my thesis and I had to start thinking about applying for postdocs. Then I started wondering, well, you know, do you want to stay in the, you know, in the academic world? I had only glimpses, I guess, from what I would see from the faculty and from postdocs. You know, it's not an, an impossible thing to try to, uh, you know, aim for an academic career. It comes at a big chunk of sacrifices, given it like time or moving places. And that might be a sacrifice that someone wants to make. And it's a completely honorable sacrifice. And I, I, I know a lot of people that do it and they're very happy about it. But then I had to ask myself, I, would I be happy about it? And I think I wasn't. I think I just didn't see myself doing that. I was also very lucky to start seeing some examples in my own life of people who had gone out of academia and having a blast. They seem to be like having a great time working on, you know, good, good, good problems and also transforming in a very interesting way. I think that that was, uh, I, I saw again in the idea of going outside of ac uh, academia, the possibility of like, hey, you know how you felt when you started your PhD, mm -hmm. how, how much, you know, you felt you were growing and discovering things. It seems that they are going through something similar, but in a different way. And that seemed more exciting. I think that that was 
uh, okay, how about, you know, I start a new, how about I start a new episode in my life? What new things I could learn? I felt that I was very satisfied, you know, inside with what I've done in physics. I felt like I've learned things that if I think about humans, of, of all history. I've learned crazy things out of the universe that most people in history might have not been able because they didn't exist. Like we didn't know about those stuff. So it was also like a point of saying humbly to myself, well, you know, maybe you just satisfy that part. Mm -hmm. What about you start exploring other things? Mm -hmm. And yeah, by the time that I submitted my thesis, I was just absolutely sure that I was gonna look for something else outside but I was still not sure what. What was the journey from having made this decision to your current position? I, I The first thing I did is like, okay, what have other people done? <laughs> well, like in the same position that I've been, what have they done? I had friends again that were in industry. So first thing I did was talking to them saying, hey, you know, I'm thinking of like not continuing like a career in academia. I think that I want to try something uh, outside and, you know, you've done it. How did you start um, getting even an idea of what other options are there? It, and it almost feels like a little bit of a chain because they had also the opportunity to talk to someone else. The chain of people helping each other kind of like get a better perspective was very useful and I think it's a very good step for anyone who wants to imagine themselves doing something else just look for someone who has done it mm -hmm. and ask them you know how was it did you do some sort of program some people get into programs that uh, you know boot camps kind of things some other people know someone from their past that uh, was working in some industry that was my case and also try to make a quick assessment of what are your resources? A training in physics gives you plenty of tools, uh, analysis tools, for example, mathematics, uh, in some cases, programming, which is a very useful tool to have, teaching and communicating, making a, a, a different a, a list of which of those skills you have and which are the ones that you actually like mm -hmm. to execute. Is there anything that you would have done differently? Um, yes, I think I would have talked to way more people. I was lucky enough that just with a little bit of uh, networking, I could I could find a, a new exciting opportunity. But it would have been very rich for me to not stop there, but to keep doing it. Any final words? I felt like a common thing that existed amongst peers and even in myself. It was a little bit of a feel of hopelessness. It seemed that getting uh, a job in something that you like, like doing research in physics, was going to be very difficult. It was going to be like a treacherous path. It can be quite demoralizing. One of the things that I'm very happy about this year and a half is that renewed sense of hope and exciting and excitement for the future. Ultimately, the, the thing that I love is to think about problems and figuring it out. I thought that I could have lost that transitioning from academia to industry. And it was very good to realize that that was not the case. Well, thank you, Juan, for this very inspirational conversation. It was great to see you again. And I'm super excited to watch you grow your career. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was really, really great to see you again. Um, and thank you for inviting me. For whoever is watching this podcast, just reach out. If 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 you are wanting to start your network, you just know one guy that you can just call and talk, and I will be happy to sit down and you know be helpful. Giant tortoise, it's my they're my favorite animal. I see them as a symbol of patience and a symbol of wisdom. I feel identified or connected to their slowness.